Hello and welcome to a short episode of The Bloke in the Workshop. Now the subject today is a quick tutorial on how to make this, well that to be more specific, um, a paper patch bullet. In this case this is for the Martini, no, unmistakable cartridge, quite convenient, it's a nice big bullet and uh, you can see exactly what I'm doing. Uh, for those not familiar with the concept of paper patching, uh, it's very simple. You have a subcaliber bullet, let's say bore diameter, or maybe even slightly less, and you bump up the diameter of the bullet by successive wrappings of paper. And the paper is usually lubricated, whether it's by impregnation uh, when you wrap it wet on the bullet, or by applying it externally. Um, I usually rub it down with beeswax and it does the job very nicely. Yeah, so the principle was then when this is fired the entire assembly of patch and bullet gets pushed down bore, the uh, paper engages the rifling and transmits the spin to the bullet. Uh, at the muzzle the uh, patch should shred and uh, leave the bullet or leave the bullet continuing its way uh, where it should go. This was uh, standard practice I'd say uh, in the 1870s, 80s um, in many European uh, military calibers so Martini, uh, the French Gras, the Swiss Vetterli, um, also uh, for use in the Milbank Armsler and Peabody. Uh, who can I think of else? I think the Vandal originally was... Anyway, highly popular. So, the bullet for paper patching is um, also a little bit special because um, it's smooth-sided but obviously the paper still needs to grip somehow. So this is the one I'm using for the martini. So the big long beast of a bullet, completely smooth. It has a cavity in the base, which is for tucking in the excess paper of the patch, as you'll see. Um, before anyone asks, where did you get this? This was uh, part of a special order through the British Military Forum years ago. Incidentally, if you have any questions on uh, history, uh, models, reloading for the Martini, please go to British Military Forum. I'll be glad to help. As I was saying, it's completely smooth, but aside from the obvious round nose, what appears to be a cylindrical uh, two-thirds, let's say, is in fact ever so slightly tapered, and it flares outwards towards the base which means that when you wrap the paper around it the patch is going to be smaller at this end at the, at the, towards the nose end than it is at the base which means that uh, well, which helps when the bullet is fired to drag the patch with it effectively I mean there's paper on the base as well so it will be pushed forward but um, yes it helps the patch grip the bullet and also helps to transmit the spin um, if not, you would fire, the bullet would rattle off down bore, and the patch would get blown out behind it, and um, yeah, it would be utterly useless. Right, uh, a few words on the patch. Um, this is what mine looks like. The dimensions I'm not going to say because it's uh, something to determine on a case by case basis. It depends on the starting diameter of the bullet. It depends on the diameter you wish to achieve. It depends on the thickness of the paper you're using. Yeah, you're just going to have to play um, until you find something that works for you. So it's got uh, diagonal edges and this helps for basically clamping the loose end of, uh, of the patch around the bullet because if you just had a straight edge, so if you just had a rectangle, um, how 
the end bit would just flap. Um, you need to, well, ideally you need to stick it down, but you don't want to start playing with glues or tape or anything. So as you'll see, when I wrap it, the final edge just gets pulled down successively as it rolled up, and then this end gets tucked into the base, and it's all nice and snug around the bullet. And uh, yes, you also need full turns of patching. Well, you, I suppose you might get away with it, but the general idea is to get full turns, so two turns, three turns. Four turns is pushing it a bit, unless you've got really thin paper. Uh, yeah, so that's about it. So I'll show you how, you how I make these, my cheats way, if you like, and uh, then we'll get to it. So to make things easy, I uh, draw myself out a template, and in this case it's just uh, standard A4 printer paper. This allows me to get 20 patches according to the dimensions I'm using, and uh, this means that if I'm not silly and cut them all up and keep at least one, I can just photocopy it as many times as I want um, to produce more patches. And then it's just a case of cutting them out, and uh, then you get a nice lot of uh, even patch material. The line you see here is just a little aid for me, so that when I roll it up, I roll it up straight, sort of a guideline if you like. So the next step will be to put these into soak. Now before I put them into soak, and uh, just a few words on the, on the, on that. Um, I'm just going to put two in, just so I'll wrap these two in. Um, it's important when you throw them in that you don't put too many at once. Um, for one, if you put in a clump, they'll stick together when they go in there, and they won't soak uniformly, and you'll get dry patches and some clump together, and you might tear them when you're trying to separate them. Secondly, you don't want them to soak too long, because you're going to be rolling these under a bit of tension, and depending on the quality of your paper, uh, if, you, if it's too wet, it's just going to the fibres are just going to separate and uh, it'll be useless. So I put them in you know, 30 seconds. You can do them one by one effectively, unless you're very very quick. So let's put them in. Let's poke them in. Make sure they. Get sort of wet thoroughly. Leave them to soak for a bit. And I've got these bullets at hand, and they're just, I use them to poke the paper into the back here once I'm done. Um, other pokey tools are also suitable. Okay, now they've soaked long enough. Let's take one line up the base of the bullet with the witness line that I've included on my patch material and then just roll it up as I said keeping ever so slight tension on the patch and there we have it and this means that the diagonal on the inner layer shall line up more or less with the diagonal on the outer layer and then I give it a pinch and a twist on the end and then grab your pokey thing of choice and just force it in like that. That also tightens everything up. So there you go, one paper patch bullet and then that needs to be left to dry. Uh, I leave them at least a day So don't be in a hurry to paper patch anything because you guys have to factor in drying time. And sometimes they don't shrink as much as you'd expect and they're a bit loose, in which case you have to do them again. So it involves a lot of patience. So there you go, again a little Twist and push. For 
pops it all in. And there we go. That's all there is to it. So, there we have it. Um, I did the rest of the bullets I had available. I've left them to dry for at least 24 hours. And I end up with a nice collection of paper pack bullets. As the uh, patch is dry, the paper, the diameter of the paper reduces and it cinches and grips the bullet and you see I can't pull this off. It really is stuck to it. All that without using glue. Uh, so these can be now be loaded up and uh, I'm sure you'll see them in action on the range at some point. Oh, I hope this has been of some use to you and thanks for watching. Please, as usual, uh, check our Facebook page regularly. Patreon is always appreciated. And uh, see you on the range. Bye.